Hi, I'm Elena. And I'm Sarah. And today's party time. Woo, who doesn't love a good party? But what are we celebrating? So many things. In my family, we even celebrate the dog's birthday. We recently had a party for him and we invited over the neighbor's dog and we had lots of treats for the two of them to enjoy. That sounds like so much fun. Did you know that God actually wants us to celebrate? Check out today's God story and you'll see what I mean. What did one volcano say to the other? I lava you. Hi everyone, it's Alyssa. Today's God story is about a party. Now, I want you to think of the biggest, best celebration that you've ever been to. We can celebrate a lot of things, maybe a friend's birthday, your sports team winning a championship. There's tons of things that we can celebrate and it's always a good time. It's a lot of fun to celebrate and God actually loves when we celebrate. That reminds me of today's big idea. God wants us to celebrate. So let's quickly recap where we are. We're in the book of Exodus, which is the second book of the Bible, and we're tracking with Moses as he leads God's people to the promised land. Before Exodus, we had Genesis, which is the book in the Bible where God created the world. And it was very good, but then people decided to stray from God and break our relationship with him. So God chose Abraham and his family to be God's special people. But they strayed from God too, and they fell into slavery in Egypt. But God loves them so much that he chose Moses to lead them out of slavery and lead them to the promised land. Today's story happens while they're on their way to the promised land, and after they receive the 10 commandments from God the first time. But that first time, they messed up big time, and they worshiped a golden calf that they made instead. Moses was so upset that he ended up smashing the 10 commandments and breaking them into a million pieces. God decided to give the Israelites a second chance with the 10 commandments. So he told Moses to chisel out two stone tablets and said that he would write the 10 commandments on these tablets. God told Moses to climb up Mount Sinai with these two tablets to meet him at the top of this mountain. He told him to come alone. So Moses did what God had asked. Let's read what happens next from Exodus 34. Then the Lord came down in the cloud. He stood there with Moses and announced his name, the Lord. As he passed in front of Moses, he called out. He said, I am the Lord, the Lord. I am the God who is tender and kind. I am gracious. I am slow to get angry. I am faithful and full of love. Moses bowed down and worshiped God. Then he asked God to forgive the Israelites for when they had messed up big time and worship the golden calf instead of God. Let's read God's response. Then the Lord said, I am making a covenant with you. I will do wonderful things in front of all your people. I will do amazing things that have never been done before in any nation in the whole world. The people you live among will see the things that I, the Lord, will do for you. And they will see how wonderful those things really are. Obey what I command you today. A covenant is a spiritual commitment between God and people. God was setting up a major commitment between himself and the people of Israel, one that would last until Jesus came and established the new covenant. God repeated the 10 commandments to Moses and included a bunch of other commandments for his people as well. What's really cool is one of the things that God commands his people to do is to celebrate. That's where we get today's big idea. God told them to celebrate the feast of unleavened bread. This was a feast that celebrated the time they were freed from slavery in Egypt and they had to eat bread that was prepared a certain way without yeast. God also said to celebrate the Feast of Weeks, which is a celebration of a special harvest time in Israel, and also the time when God gave them the Torah, which is the law of the people of Israel. A fun fact about the Feast of Weeks is that this was the feast that the first Christ followers were celebrating when the Holy Spirit came to them at Pentecost. God also said to celebrate the Feast of Booths, also known as the Feast of Tabernacles. This was, again, a time of harvest where people remembered how much they relied on God. They would make special kinds of booths or tents to live in for the entire week. God really does want us to celebrate. It's good for our souls, it's good for our hearts, it's good to remember what God is doing in our lives. That's why celebrations like Christmas and Easter are so exciting now because we remember the big moments of Jesus' life. But even though our focus is on celebrations today, we shouldn't miss the rest of what happened with God and Moses on Mount Sinai because it's pretty amazing. So here's a quick recap. 
After Moses asks God for forgiveness and God makes a covenant with his people, God tells Moses to write down the words he has spoken, probably because they were really important words. Moses stayed on that mountaintop with God for 40 days and 40 nights without having anything to eat or drink. When he came down the mountain, his face was shining because he had been talking with God. It was so shiny that when Moses' brother, Aaron, and the rest of the people saw him, they were afraid and wouldn't go close to him. Moses called them closer, and then he gave them all the commands that God had given. After he was done talking with them, he covered his face with a veil so the shininess wouldn't freak people out anymore. Now, there is a lot in this story today, but we're gonna focus on one big idea from the commands that God gave. God wants us to celebrate. And even though now we have a new covenant with Jesus, God still wants us to celebrate. He wants us to be happy about the things that he's doing in our lives and in the world. Celebration is a time to worship and give thanks to God. So I hope you take some time to celebrate this week and I will catch you next time. Turn to the person next to you and answer the following questions before the time runs out. What? Question time! What was the best celebration or party you have ever been to? What was it like? What is a covenant? A special kind of tent? a spiritual commitment between God and people, or a new type of food. God instructs his people to celebrate three special times, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Weeks, and what other feast? The Feast of Goats, the Feast of Wine, or the Feast of Booths. Why do you think God wants us to celebrate? Can you say the key verse before the time is up? Say it with me. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord who rules over all. The whole earth is full of his glory. Isaiah 6, verse 3. Get ready! Three, two, one, go! Oh. Ah. Uh. God told Moses they should celebrate because he wanted them to remember all that had happened to them. So they celebrated with the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Booths, and many more. Yeah, and I like that even though we're part of a new covenant, we as Jesus followers still have tons to celebrate. Absolutely. We can celebrate birthdays, Christmas, getting good grades, but we can even celebrate when we push through a difficult situation. Let's check out Rachel's story. She's an amazing girl and she knows how to party. I'm Rachel, I love music, and I am embracing what it means to be different. I have a very stylish mother. Her and I actually started to go thrift shopping together. And I realized that the great thing about thrift shopping is it's one of a kind. Nobody has what you pick up, especially if it's vintage. And from then on, I started to cut and sew and paint and put patches on things and just make certain pieces my own. I love the hunt. There's something so fun about the hunt. I never really fit in. There was always something kind of different about me. When I was younger, I was, you know, short and chubby and I looked a little bit different from the other people in my class and the people I was surrounded by and I felt like the ugly duckling. 
I was bullied, really heavily bullied. It started when I was as young as 10. And when I reached middle school, it got really bad. Um, I was cyber bullied so badly that my parents actually had to get the police involved. I went to an arts high school, so every day was a bit of a competition. And me wanting to fit in, I got involved with the cattiest of girls, and I guess they didn't like me. There was this one time when I was in school, I got a phone call from this guy that was very, very popular, and I was so excited, and we had this great phone call, and it was just nice to be listened to and heard. I was getting attention from a cute boy. I thought that was cool. And then I found out that it was a cruel joke. It was awful. It was absolutely awful. I graduated high school and I went to university and I studied jazz voice performance. It was a four year program, very intense. So I had graduated from my program. At the time I was in a, in a good relationship, but I was broken. Everything was great, like great, but I was the most broken human being. And then it got to a point where I had a talk with my mom and just broke. I just broke down. And I told her that I needed to get back into church and I needed to start with the worship team. I reached out to Anna, worship pastor. I said that I'm going through a really hard time and she was so welcoming. It felt like a big hug and like a welcome home almost. So where am I at now? Um, I'm writing my own music. This one time I was at a gig and these two words popped into my head back home. What does it mean to come back home? My struggle was starting to end. I was coming to. I was silly, I was goofy. I didn't care what people thought about me. I had truly like arrived back home with God. It's hard to find your will to pray when you feel you've lost your way. But with some hope, you will find your way back home. Life is a process, and I think you have to enjoy the process. And that's something I've learned. Some days it's hard and I don't want to enjoy the process. I just want it to be easy and I just want things to go my way. But at this point, I am celebrating being different. I love it. I honestly love who I am today. It's fun. I mean, I still have my struggles, but like, it's great that I'm into fashion. It's great that I'm into tattoos. I'm just this smorgasbord of artsy human being. And I, I really love it now, I do. What in Rachel's story can you relate to? What did Rachel learn to celebrate in her life? Why do you think that is important? I love all the different aspects of Rachel's life. She went from being bullied because she's different to celebrating being different. Yeah, and as she said, she still has some struggles, but life is a process and God has clearly helped her figure out who she is in Him. Definitely. Let's look at our lives and celebrate all the good things that we have, from family and friends, our gifts and talents, to most importantly, the fact that we're children of God. Well, let's break into our small groups so we can see how this can look in our lives. 